What's up YouTube? This is Dave's Hat Enough Point 7. This is another video to do with my weekly review for Salem Season 3, Episode 2, The Heart is the Devil. <laughs> review. And another video from Dave. And yeah, pretty much it's my weekly review for Salem Season 3, which I have to say this episode is probably as good as last week, if not better, you know. I just have to give last week a little bit more of a score because it was a premiere, how they opened it, just with a fucking bang. But I actually enjoyed this one maybe, possibly a little bit more, believe it or not. It was just a good episode. I liked it. I like what, I like what their direction they're going this season. I mean, season one started out, it was fantastic. And then the second season came along, it got even better. Now the third season's top in season one and two. So it's just progressing this show. It's fucking awesome. If you have not checked out this show and you came to this review maybe because you're a part of this channel because I do gaming stuff and wonder what the fuck I'm talking about, uh, Salem's a show on WGN, uh, which is a fantastic show. It's a show that paved the way for other shows like Outsiders. Um, it just blew the network up. It's a great show. I'm glad they got it. Um, if, I believe you can see the first season and second season on Netflix. If you can't see it on that, on demand, uh, WGN, if you can't see it on that, Go buy the seasons. They're well worth it. You can get them at Walmart or Best Buy. Season 1, 2 for sure. But this season's going to be great. It actually has this episode is where they introduce Marilyn Manson's character as Thomas Dinley. Played a very small part, though, this this episode. It was, it was only in, like, two scenes. Very short scenes. But I, I believe they had plans for, more plans for him throughout the season. It is because this episode was mainly focused on Mary sibling you know and her having to deal with being resurrected and you know what she went through this episode having to basically you know the the show kicked off basically with her uh being brought back to life picking up from last week being resurrected they put her in those trees with all you know where all the other witches are the essex witches and tichaba you know goes near the trees and she just jumps out of the fucking trees and grabs her by the throat screaming for john alden because <laughs> you gotta think she pretty much last, you know, before she died, the last thing she was doing was saving John Alden. So she died saving him, giving, you know, her the last bit of her of her blood. So she's brought back from, you know, wherever she was, most likely hell or somewhere, because she's a witch, and comes back, and that's the first thing she's thinking about. And she's running in circles, and uh, they got her, like, you know, they got their magic going, where she's basically running through a maze back to them. She's trying to get away from them and find John Alden, and then... They're like, all right, calm the shit down. <laughs> They're like, we got some shit to talk about. You know, get over the whole thing with John, which she, you know, she doesn't. She's still thinking about John because later on in the episode, she goes and sees him. I'm getting that in just a second. Uh, but yeah, pretty much I'm going to do this review a little bit different than my normal ones because I didn't really write, you know, any notes for this review. So I'm going to go over each character and just basically give you my thoughts and opinions, score it, call it a review. But yeah, like I was saying with Mary Siblin, she finally calms down after, the, you know, they have her running in circles. And they had her like in a maze or something. She couldn't get out of that area. And Tichaba basically tells her, you know, hey, you know, forget John Alden. You got bigger problems. You know, you got to pretty much, uh, you know, kill your son, you know. And, the, you know, the Essex witches are telling her, you know, it's your fault. This is all on you. And she's like, all on me? What the fuck do you mean all on me? <laughs> she's like, you, you guys got me to do this shit. So they basically argue back and forth. And pretty much uh, takes Tichaba to show her, you know, what's going to happen. You know, because now Tichaba is pretty much that guy with no eyes. She took his job, you know, and she has, she can see the future and everything now. And shows Mary, you know, what's going to go on with Salem if you know, they don't stop her son, you know, now the reaper, the devil, and she shows her basically the future of Salem in ruins, and uh, pretty much John Alden's on a pile of men dead, and that pretty much wakes her up like, okay, you know, we got to do something, and they pretty much tell her you got to kill your son, which is going to be really hard for anybody, that would be hard for anybody to do, even if you you know your son was possessed by the devil, <laughs> You know, maybe she could think in her mind she could get the devil out of her son to get her son back. I don't know. It didn't look like that this episode. It looks like she's just going with, you know, kill the son of a bitch. But basically with Mary this episode, we'll go through different characters. And two, I'm running low on time with my camera. I have to do them in 15 minutes. Or 15 minutes. That's what I have to do with my tablet until they fix the, you know, C920 camera. And I get an update from Windows 10. 
But I'm thinking I'll use some alternative program because it's really annoying when I do my reviews. It's just I have to do them real fast and go through shit and I run out of time. It, it sucks. But basically, you just can go through the characters. So like I said with Mary, she basically ends up you know, before going and, you know, seeing the Reaper, she ends up going and seeing John Alden and getting fucking down and dirty with him because <laughs> she has dick on her mind. <laughs> and she pretty much ends up having sex with John Alden. John Alden's like, whoa, he, he thinks she's a ghost there for a second. She's like, no, I'm real. You know, I'm back. And she's like, I, I don't want to talk about that. She's like, we're going to just fuck and you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> and then the next morning when they wake up, uh, he's basically sitting there telling her, you know, let's get out of here. Let's leave Salem. She's like, no, I'm bound to this land. I can't fucking leave. You know, I got to, you know, undo what, what I did with the other witches. You just, you know, chill. And he's basically trying to, you know, get her to go. And she just puts his ass to sleep. She's like, no. <laughs> like, puts him to bed. She's like, I'm sorry for what I did coming here. She's like, you know, but I just, you know, wanted to see you. And basically, it's selfish of her. And, uh, pretty much she ends up actually going to, you know, her old house, which now the son has taken over and turned it into his, and there's, like, hallways that go on forever. You know, she's looking when she goes in the house, but, well, when she knocks on the door, she's the Reaper's brother, and he don't, he looks very suspicious at her. He knows who she is, but he's like, uh, he, he basically, you know, he's not feeling her. He's like, what the fuck are you doing here? He knew that she was dead. Why are you back? What are you back for? And she's trying to say she's all about her son. He's not buying that shit at all. So she actually ends up seeing her son, and he's all happy, you know, acting like, actually acting like her son, but it's the devil. He's fooling her. And pretty much what happens with her is the son actually uh, ends up, you know, talking to the, re you know, his brother, and the brother ends up doing a test on her. And it's a really fucking cool scene where he basically, because we learn that he's basically the swarm. He's like of all these insects, and he tells her that pretty much, you know, he he's not human, you know, which we assume, and he basically it was never, a, a you know, a young boy or nothing. Because she's saying, oh, I just want my boy back, you know. And he's like, we weren't boy. We're, he's like, you know what you're, you know what, who's in your son? He's like, you basically, he's like, you pretty much don't know what's going on. Because he, he's kind of baffled. And then he's in the back of his mind, he's thinking either, you know, maybe she is, you know, wanting to be here for her son. Maybe she's fooling us. So he ends up running a test on her, basically taking this fucking uh, worm out of him and putting it in her fucking ear. And she's like, held up magically, like, she's tied, and it's fucking just going through her body, and she's shaking and shit, and then that, that worm comes out through her mouth, well, not a worm, it's basically like a centipede or something, and then he ends up taste putting it in his mouth, and he can tell, you know, what she was thinking and what she's here for, but she actually passes the test, which I was fucking surprised, but then they play another test on her, where she basically, he's, because the, the, the son comes, he's like, oh, I love you, mother. I'm so glad you passed the test, you know, blah, 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 blah. So she's giving him a bath later on, and she goes and grabs a fucking knife and starts stabbing him. Next thing you know, the son's standing over there in the room, and she's like, who did I stab? It was the fucking Reaper's brother. And now she's fucked. That's pretty much how they end that. Uh, other than this, other than that, in this episode, you have Tichaba had some cool shit going on where she actually met with John Alden after the whole thing with, uh, you know, uh, John Alden finally seeing Mary come back, and she tells John Alden, she's like, we need your help, but basically tells him, we, I used your love, I used Mary's love for you to bring her back, so that pisses him off a little bit, but then they pretty much compromise things, and she tells him, hey, there's a bigger war going on than, you know, what's, what the war you're fighting with us, you know, the devil's here, you got to get your men together, do your shit with your soldiers, and Mary will handle her thing, just get going, you know, and they basically have, you know, compromise a little bit. So, then you have Tichaba end up, you know, she ends up taking a cat, I thought this was the coolest part, of the, one of the coolest parts, there's a lot of cool shit in this episode, one of the coolest parts in the episode, she takes a stuffed cat, and she pretty much takes the eyes out of the stuffed cat, I think she eats the eyes or something, does some of her fucking magic, brings the cat back to life with no eyes, uh, and she, she's like, I will bring you light, and me, and you bring me sight or something, and she ends up having cat's eyes now, which I thought was fucking cool. So now she has this cat that can roam around and spy and shit that's blind, 
And then she has cat's eyes, which I think is cool. Because, you know, she didn't have her eyes because basically she got her eyes eaten out by the devil. You know, the reaper from Burns. So she has eyes now and she's basically, you know, she can be in certain areas where she's not, you know, she, when she went to go see John Alden, her body wasn't there. She was somewhere else. And he went to, and she had her eyes and everything. So she just looked regular to him. But when he went to go after her, after she told him what she did, how she brought Mary back with, you know, his love, her love for him, he, he went right through her and she wasn't there. She was basically somewhere else. So she's got pretty good powers now. And she's pretty much the guy that was in the tree that she ate his eyes, you know. So that's pretty much what's going on with Tichaba. And then you had this whole thing going on with Cotton. Cotton and Anne, you know. And Cot this is the funny part of the whole episode, I thought, with Cotton basically, you know, he's trying to fucking stab himself. You know, he's trying to drown uh, Brown Jenkins, whether he's trying to cut him in the, you know, stab him in the stomach. Or he's like, I need a drink after that, after she stops him from stabbing himself. And then he's like, I, and he, she's like, no, you will not drown Brown, drown Brown Jenkins. And he's like, he just basically wants to die. So then the Countess' son shows up, and they basically end up talking him into, you know, pretty much talking to the people at his church and comforting the town while they do their takeover. And he's, you know, resisting. He isn't going to do that shit. And they say to him, they said, well, when you go there and you go against, you know, you give them the wrong word, you'll die right on the spot. So they end up going to the church with him and he looks at first like he's going to tell the whole town that that's the reaper's son and you know that uh, that's actually the reaper and he's not the boy that they think he is and then he kind of switches everything where he gets in their good graces and pretty much John Alden sees him leaving on leaving later on and comes up to him he's like what have they done to you and he's just playing along with it you know he's acting like he's you know all for Ann that you know he's seen the light you know and he's that's his wife and then later on in the episode, we see him actually taking hair from her. So he still isn't on her side. He's just playing along because he knows, you know, he can't do shit or he'll fucking die. So other than that, you had um, Mercy with this whole thing with Isaac going on. And Isaac was basically investigating, you know, the girl that Mercy helped that did the whole cat's cradle from last week, which was fucking awesome. Uh, one of the best scenes in Salem. I love that shit. So many great scenes, but that was cool. But he goes and investigates the body, and that's when Marilyn Manson, Thomas Diddley's uh, character's uh, introduced. And he's basically, I'd say he's like a town, uh, I'd say he's like kind of like the uh, medical examiner. That's what, I, that's what I'm guessing he is. Uh, they said he was like a hairstylist that cuts people up for the fun of it. So maybe he's like a beautician or something, but he looks like he was examining the body. And he's examining it with Isaac, and Isaac, you know, just doesn't buy the whole thing how this guy just decided to jump through a window. Because <laughs> later on in the episode, he actually sees Alice, the girl that helped, that, you know, Mercy helped kill her, her uncle that was prostituting her. And he says to her, he says, you know, most people that jump out a window open the window and, you know, jump through it. He says they don't go through the window. <laughs> so she gives him a, feeds him a bunch of bullshit. And then runs off and he's looking out the window and he sees somebody else looking. So that's most likely Mercy. And then basically through the episode, with what, other, what else Mercy does well, with, with this episode is she ends up, the town the, the person that runs the town, Hawthorne, actually comes to her from what Isaac told him, that there's a whorehouse going on, a brothel. And he goes and checks it out like he's concerned about it. But then he wants like a cut of the business. And they, you know, haggle the price and everything. And then they agree on 50%. But Mercy gives him a drink, and I knew there was something up with that drink. And he ends up drinking it, and later on to the episode, he ends up back at uh, Thomas Diddley's place, Marilyn Manson's character, and he's all, like, getting deformed looking and boils running on his face. And throughout the episode, he's starting to look worse and worse. He ends up going back to Mercy. He's like, what did you do to me, you know? And she's basically has him get on his knees, and she's, you know, pretty much making him bow to her. And he, she, he he's going to run her shit, you know? I mean, no, she's going to run his life, and she, he's not going to affect her fucking business. Or she'll, She basically showed him what would happen. But yeah, that's basically the episode. Um, it was a fucking fantastic episode. Last week, I gave it a 10. This week, I'm going to go... Last week was an opener for a season. I just thought they opened with a bang. This one was really great, too. I liked it just as much, but with it being a season opener for last week, I gave it a higher score. This week, I'm going to give a 9.5. Five. I loved it. This show's great this year. If you like I said, if you have not checked out Salem, 
what are you doing? I mean, it's one of the best shows on television. Definitely a show to check out. Well, guys, tell me what you think in the comments section and more videos to come. Thank you, YouTube.